Stanford. Last time ND went to Stanford Stadium was 2003, and they walked out with a 57-7 win. Would it be as easy this time? Look like it early. Brady Quinn to Jeff Samarja, 80-yard touchdown. Samarja sets the Irish single-season receiving yards record with 1,192. What a year it has been for him. Irish up early, but Stanford does not back down. Down 14-7. Trent Edwards over the middle, great diving catch, Justin McCullum. And we're tied at 14 at halftime. It's a game, a lot riding on this for Notre Dame at $14 million BCS payout. Third quarter, still 14-14, Quinn. Marie Stovall, he's in for a touchdown. Quinn over 400 yards passing, 433 to be exact, his fourth 400-yard game of the season. Stoink! DJ Fitzpatrick misses the PAT. He had made his first 50 of the season. So the Irish lead is 20-14. Now it's 23-14 in the fourth quarter. TJ rushing 87 yards for the score. And Stanford's down by just two. 23-21, late fourth. Down six. 2-11 to go. TC Ostrander over the middle, deep down the sideline. And Mark Bradford is there. Holy shnikey, 76 yards. Can Stanford pull off the upset? They're in scoring territory. Two plays later, Ostrander to Matt Traverso for the four-yard score. Stanford up 31-30, but they give Notre Dame and Charlie Weiss's offense a lot of time. We know Weiss has engineered uh, three Super Bowl winning drives in New England. He uses his experience here. Quinn, the lob to Stovall for 21 yards. Irish inside the Stanford 10. Two plays later, Darius Walker, close, close. Reach out and breaks the plane. Irish go for two and they make two. And they go on to win 38 to 31 and they are most assuredly BCS bound. The only good thing was that when they scored, we still had the two timeouts left. But fortunately, we didn't have to use them because, you know, we made a couple of big plays and got the ball down the field. And, you know, with the way the kicking game was going, I was just happy that we were able to run it in there and, and, and get that touchdown. I think if you go out and you watch what we do every Saturday, this team, as a team, not just guys individually, there's no other, there's no other place that we should be than in a BCS game. It's, it's who we are, and we're going to represent the, the school well and college football well. Now it's up to the bowl committees. Notre Dame did what they had to do to become BCS bowl eligible, and you know that the Irish fans travel well. The only time that ND has played in a BCS bowl was back in the 2000 season when they were soundly defeated by Oregon State in the Fiesta Bowl, and that's perhaps where the Irish are heading. Needed to win and hope for a Virginia Tech loss in order to win the ACC Coastal Division. Virginia and Algro. Virginia's never won in the state of Florida. 0 and 13, including five ball games. And what Nicole Scherzinger is to the Pussycat Dolls, Emmanuel Byers. Don't you wish you is to Virginia. He caught a pass and threw that one to Dayon Williams for 90 yards. Look at this. Oops. Oh, that's. Marcus Maxey and Brandon Merriweather running into each other. Virginia takes a 7-3 lead. Yep. Freshman duties. That's Aaron Clark. Got to hold the flag all game long. But he would come <laughs> up big on the field. Devin Hester breaks one. But look, that's him. right. That's the flag waver right there. Aaron Clark, well done, son. Go back and get your flag. Time winding down in the second quarter. Kyle Wright, efficient. 23-30, 248, no picks. Center of Smosh for some beautiful NFL-like moves. Look at that. Miami misses the extra point. It's 15 to 10 at the break. Fourth quarter, Miami up 18-10, looking for insurance. Right on the bootleg. That would lead to a Charlie Jones one-yard touchdown. Hurricanes go on to win. Virginia 0-14 in the state of Florida now. All right, so what about Virginia Tech? Miami did its part, but Tech could lock it up. The ACC's Coastal Division title with a win over North Carolina. And there they go, blocking kicks. Darryl Tab with the block. Virginia Tech credited with two block kicks in the game. Suing drive, Marcus Vick, Jeff King, touchdown. Tech would miss the extra point. Vick, 8 of 15, just 61 yards. 11 seconds remaining in the first half. Matt Baker looking for Jesse Holly. Found him, but Holly couldn't hang on. They settled for a field goal, 6 3 Tech at halftime. Third quarter now. Hokies finally get their offense going. Cedric Humes, a senior on senior day, give it to him. They gave it to him six times on that drive. He celebrates the touchdown with his family. Dean Tech up 13-3. Then later, Humes dragging people into the end zone. Career high 134 yards and a pair of scores for him. Take another look at it. Tech goes on to win it 30-3. And now
now they get a chance to try to defend last year's ACC title. Apparently no one. Colorado blew a chance on Friday. Iowa State trying to do it on Saturday against Kansas. Second quarter, 7-3 Cyclones. Brett Meyer to Todd Blythe. With 14-3, Iowa State Meyer threw for 257 yards and a pair of touchdowns. Fourth quarter now, Kansas down 14-6. Jason Swanson to Derek Fine. And Fine will take this one all the way down inside the 10. Later in the drive, it's Brian Luke. He's in for the touchdown. Kansas will make the two-pointer to tie it at 14. Later four, Cyclones with a rock. Meyer. Back to pass again, finds Austin Flynn. He's gonna take it down inside the five. That led to a touchdown run. 21-14 Cyclones are trying for their fifth straight conference win, something they never done. Later fourth, Kansas ball. Luke finds Marcus Henry for 35 yards. Luke had lost his starting job back in October, but he got it back after Jason Swanson got hurt. Later, Luke to Dexton Fields. Touchdown, tied at 21, and they will go to overtime. Let's go to the way back machine. Actually, not that far back. Last year, Iowa State needed to beat Missouri to go to the Big 12 title game. In overtime, Meyer picked off in the end zone, and the Cyclones went down 17-14. So now back to Saturday. Cyclones got the ball first. Brett Culberson from 41 yards away. No good. He missed one in regulation that would have beaten Missouri last year in the game that we just flashed back to. So Iowa State hoping to try to win its first conference title outright in 114 years, but Kansas said it's not going to happen. Scott Webb said, that's what I dream about every night. I finally got to do it. His game winner gives Kansas the victory. Now, you know, that Big 12 title game has been a trap game before, famously for Oklahoma and Nebraska, but Texas appears to have the upper hand on Colorado, who goes to the title game now backing in after Iowa State's loss. Back on October 15th, Texas beat the Buffaloes 42-17. Longhorns defense allowed just 237 yards, but Gary Burnett and company will try again. None of us like uh, the way we got it done, but we got to find a way to get it done. Now we got to do something with it, now that we've been given this opportunity, and... Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to going to work tomorrow. That's pretty much what it boils down to. We still won more games than anybody else did in, in the Northern Division. And um, we won some big games here. We beat some good teams. And shoot, we're in the game. Well, Vince Young was in the game last time around. Three touchdown runs and two through the air in the first meeting. And he completed 86% of his passes. Lou Holtz tells us if Colorado has any chance of stopping Young and the Horns this time around. Oh, beautiful down there in Tampa. 80 <laughs> degrees, 37 percent humidity. How about East Hartford, Connecticut? Try 32 degrees. Just rub it in. All right, fourth quarter. Don't forget, if the Bulls win this game, it sets up a showdown at home against West Virginia next week for the BCS bid. If they lose this, West Virginia gets the bid. Look at this. Third and goal from the one where disorganized five-yard penalty. Fourth and goal now. Andre Hall on the reverse. Gives it to Courtney. De an odd play. And Dan Davis, that's how you roll in East Hartford. Dan Davis sniffs it out. Okay, now, late in the game, 2.52 to go. We're punting, and we're punting the ball 30 feet. A 10-yard punt. Chris Pavaceros would like a, a breakfast ball, a do-over. It's like kicking a frozen turkey. Out. This is the very next play, 2.45 to go. We have time to move the ball down the field and, and try to get into a better scoring situation. Instead, Pat Yulmis picked off by Tyvon Branch, and UConn wins, so West Virginia gets the BCS bid. All right, if you win the Big East BCS bid and you're not the Miami Hurricanes, chances are you're not winning the ball game you're playing. That's been the case since the BCS started back in 1998. The three previous teams that have reached a BCS ball game have all lost by a combined 66 points. Will West Virginia continue that trend? We'll wait and see. And it's intense. Number 13, Georgia. Number 20, Georgia Tech. In Atlanta, 100th game between the two. Georgia's won the last four. This is the top play nominee, first drive of the game. Reggie Ball up top for Calvin Johnson. 7-0 Georgia Tech, their first lead since 2001 against Georgia. Such a great catch. Demario Mitchell, the Georgia defender, actually clapped for him after the catch. Late first quarter, Reggie Ball to Pat uh -oh. Clark. He's nailed by Greg Blue. What's up, dog? Fourth quarter transition. Fourth quarter tied at seven. DJ Shockley to Brian McClendon. 19-yard touchdown. Bulldogs take the lead. 
Shockley 15 to 34, buck 98. Late in the fourth quarter, check ball at the 11. Reggie Ball picked off by Tim Jennings. And Jennings said he knew it was coming like Nostradamus or somebody. I just wanted to jump in front of him, make a play instead of backing the ball down. I mean, I just made, I just had the vision last night. And the vision came true. Bulldogs going to win at 14-7. To make it five in a row for them now against the Yellow Jackets. More bad blood from Florida. Knowles and the Gators hooking up in Gainesville. The troops in Afghanistan, they're partisan fans, hoping for the Gators. First play of the second quarter. Chris Leak, the Chad Jackson. Nine catches, 97 yards for him. It's 7 0 Gators. Gators Marcus Thomas, he's nicknamed his belly Scoop. And we told you that for a reason. Seminoles still trailing 7-0. Field goal attempt on fourth down. Kick blocked by Thomas and Reggie Lewis runs the ball back for a touchdown. And take another look at it. It's Thomas and Scoop getting up over the defensive line. That's a big man right there. Oh, got that belly up. And the kick was down. 14-0 Gators. Fourth quarter. Gators up 20 to nothing. Leak to Dallas Baker. Leak 19 to 28, 211 yards. Gators going to win at 34-7. Urban Meyer said, we got some juice after that game. Get in my belly. For the first time since 88, Tennessee will not go to a bowl game. A ball loss would give them seven for the first time since 1977. Johnny Major's first season. Can't let that happen. Taking on Kentucky, Eric Ainge to Robert Meacham. 50-yard touchdown. Bulls lead 7-0. Second quarter now 7-3. Ainge has the wage to Chris Hannon. 32 yards. Tennessee will extend their lead to 14-3. End of the third now. Balls leading 17-6. Blocked. Curtis Pulley able to collect the ball and take it in. That's nice. Tennessee goes on to win 27-8. Uh, without a doubt, the biggest disappointment of 2005 has to be Tennessee. The Vols entered the season as the nation's third ranked team. They end up with a losing record out of bowl contention. Some big name schools to fail to produce include Purdue, Texas A&M, and Pittsburgh under Dave Wanstead. See the, the golfers do this on Sunday before they tee off, right? <laughs> That'd be fun. Bedlam battle continues. Sooners are trying to avoid their first five lost seasons since 1999, Bob Stoops' first season, and they're off to a good start. Redshirt freshman Brett Beaumar to James Moses, 21-0. Looky here, four Oklahoma State defenders stacking the weak side. Handoff goes near side to Adrian Peterson with a convoy of blockers. He goes untouched, 84 yards, and Oklahoma takes the 28-7 lead. Fourth quarter, Oklahoma up 14, looking to put it away. More Adrian Peterson. Takes the pitch and check out the comeback. Woo! That was sweet. 71 yards. He had 237 total. His second consecutive season with 1,000 yards rushing. And the Sooners roll in Norman 42 14. But Fresno State taking on Nevada Bulldogs. Clinch at least to share the WAC title with a win. 6 0 in conference play. Fourth quarter, Wolfpack trailing. But Robert. Hubbard running, 146 yards on the ground, three touchdowns. Wolfpack goes in front, 31-27. Fourth quarter, Wolfpack punting. The ball will go off Elgin Simmons' back. <laughs> and the, Bulldog, the uh, Bulldogs turn it over, Wolfpack recover. Ensuing possession for them, Jeff Rowe to Nietzsche and Flowers. Rowe with two touchdowns, one in the air, one on the ground. Wolfpack up 38-27. Next possession for Fresno State, Paul Pinniger to Matt Rivera. Pinniger with 405 yards passing and four touchdowns. They convert the two-pointer. It's 38-35. Ensuing onside kick. Ball deflects off Mike McCoy. But Nevada dodges a bullet and recovers it. And they hang on to win it 38-35.